Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we are playing Black Ops 2. You already All right, know let's try this again. Apparently, I joined a game late. Love to see it. There we go. Sit down. Hello and goodbye. You're bad. Seriously? No. Oh my god. The bullet registration in this game is so gay. You're bad. You're also trash. See, when you catch those guys off guard, they aren't expecting you. I'm not going to try to push that guy. Okay, go in. I'm just going to toss an EMP over there, because why not? You're also trash. Let's see if I can spawn trap this dude. <laughs> I did. Let's go. Oh my god, the accuracy, dude. I'm low-key scared to go down there, dude. I haven't gotten an AGR in a very long time. Oh my god, I got the stealth. Let's go. First game in. Let's go. Video can end here, guys. I don't need to play anymore. No, just kidding. We're going on a streak as long as we can. I'm single-handedly putting my team on my back, and I'm not winning this game by any close means. We're nine away. We're not going to win. It's like, really, dude? Okay, what gun is that? I can't remember. SMR, that's right. That gun's so annoying to face. Anyways, I'm not going to win this game, so I'll see you in the next match. A few moments later. Here we go, we are playing on Cove. Halo 3 is one of the most loved, iconic, and popular video games of all time. However, it was released all the way back in 2007, almost 15 years ago at this point. Earlier this year, all of the original Halo 3 servers were shut down forever, never to be played on again. Fortunately for all Halo fans, you can still play Halo 3 on the Master Chief Collection. I actually spent my past month playing Halo 3 every single day. I have a decent amount of time in it overall, so if you've never tried Halo 3 or just haven't played for a while, today I'm going to be answering the question, is Halo 3 still worth playing in 2022? I'll be covering pretty much every aspect of the online Halo 3 experience, from how the matchmaking plays, to the custom games community, social features, and even its progression. So hop in your warrog, turn off the music, and ride along as we take a deep dive into the current state of Halo 3. The multiplayer hasn't really changed much from its debut almost 15 years ago. Still has all the classic maps and modes like Narrows, Guardian, and The Pit, and gameplay and weapons remain completely faithful to the original. However, there's actually some new maps that got added just last year. Two of these maps are pretty great and a lot of fun, while the other one, not so much. But hey, you gotta take what you can get. The gameplay is solid as always. Halo 3 is competitive and difficult enough to be engaging but also casual enough to be fun and relaxing to play. The fairly loose skill-based matchmaking was nice, and I loved having some games where I could relax and slay out. All right, so here we are in multiplayer. So I'm on bottom, you're on top. So we gotta find our guns, I think, right? Am I ducking? Picked up some I ammo. feel like I'm like low. Nah. Like I'm ducking or something. We gotta pull up, we gotta find our guns. Oh, I'm that. at the, hold on. I'm at the bottom? No, I'm at the bottom. All right, You gotta find right. guns all and right, stuff, now. see. All right, now I just go, go. You know why? I'm, the the controller's still kind of different. Oh, I can't. Uh, we got a map right in front of us. I know. Uh, as soon as you said that, I just said it. I just looked up too. How many times I gotta shoot this dude? <laughs> a few times. Well, I got a pistol. This guy's got a yes. machine gun. <laughs> yeah, and I ain't hitting you it's not dark. once. I didn't hit him not once. <laughs> okay, start. All right, I'm back. I'm coming to get you. Can, Can I get your back machine gun at least? You ain't getting my machine gun. You I just got machine it. Gun, you getting shot. <laughs> oh, I don't even got a gun. You couldn't shoot me with the machine gun. How are you going to shoot me without it? <laughs> come get oh, it. Come on. Come, oh, come get it. Come oh, get it. Oh. Well, you don't have a gun? Nah, I ain't got no gun. I'm coming for your ass. I don't care. Nah, 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 nah. nah. Where'd you, you go over here? You ain't coming for me. No? You ain't coming for me. Oh. Where the hell did this guy go? Oh, there was a gun right there. I missed it. Oh. Oh. There was a gun right there. What happened? I'm, I'm back. Come back. Where'd you go? Did you run by me? Did you just go right by me? Why well, can't I get that gun? You gotta go over and grab it and then hit X. What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now today I want to go ahead, kick back, relax, and describe to you guys why I personally believe Gears of War is the most skilled franchise out of every first person and third person shooter game I have ever death. 
but out of all the years of experience that I've had and all the shooting games that I've ever played, Gears of War to me personally, again, all opinion based. But Gears of War to me personally is the most skillful, unique, and also it adds a nice casual side for people who aren't even trying to be competitive to still enjoy the overall flow of this game. Gears of War is truly a special title, not only with the casual gameplay, but also in esports because it's more than just shooting your weapon. It's more than just having the best accuracy. Let's be honest here. In Gears of War, there's not much aiming involved anyways. The majority of the high-skilled players are going to be running around with the Nasher shotguns. If you're using a Lancer, it's usually to, you know, pluck down some enemies who are trying to get a power weapon or something of that sort. But very rarely is someone going to try to attack you with a Lancer. I mean, the most you'll see is someone pull out a pistol. But down to its core, everybody is running and gunning with shotguns. It's the most fast-paced, hardcore experience you'll ever find in any shooting game. That's why I always tell people who are in Call of Duty who are complaining about the ways that this game is changing. It's not fast paced enough for you. Check out Gears of War. Seriously, if you're an Xbox player or you're on PC and you're tired of that and you want a really fast paced game, this game is literally designed for you. But as I was saying, that fast paced, you know, shotgun only charm really takes away from having to aim 24-7 and it adds an emphasis on thinking. Gears of War is more than just shooting. It's a knowledge game. It's almost like playing a game of chess. It's about positioning, being able to rotate around a certain area. Shoot, you can even hold down one location. And just based on how you hold it, how you grab your cover, how you rotate through cover, how you get your right hand angles, how you position yourself. Will... It's great to be able to play the classic Doom games not only on current systems, but on handhelds. Of course, the Switch version of Doom Eternal being delayed to an unknown date is a bit of a bummer, but we did get a new Doom game. The pre-order bonus for Eternal, and a game that's never been ported to new systems since its release back in 1997. Here is my review of Doom 64 for the Nintendo Switch. The story of Doom 64 takes place after Doom 2 and, depending on who you ask, after Final Doom as well. After being decommissioned from fighting the legions of hell, the Doom Marine is brought back in when a mother demon appears, resurrecting the entire demonic army. So he ventures off to take on the forces of hell once again and put a stop to that mother demon. Now unfortunately, the story is probably the weakest part of Doom 64. The first two games of the series had regular story updates when you beat every so many levels, but in 64 the only story scene you get is after you clear the entire game. But there is a bright side to this, and that is the Lost Levels campaign, a new chapter introduced in this re-release that takes place after Doom 64 and connects the classic games with the new games Doom 2016 and Eternal. This is extremely interesting. After all, there have been tons of fan theories being thrown around ever since Doom 2016 came out, with people reading the codex entries and seeing subtle little hints that suggest that all of the games of the series are connected. When it comes to gameplay, Doom 64 is a first-person shooting game with emphasis on exploration and fast-paced shooting. This quote-unquote remastered version of the game has enhancements the original didn't have. First of all, the Doom 93...